Hey everyone, hope you're doing well, I'm Lucas and welcome Appreciate to an F124 follow, track follow, follow, follow. guide here around Bahrain. On screen now is my world record lap and after we watch it we're going to be analysing, so hope you enjoy. Exits are so poor through there. Like, I think that's part of the main issue. I actually gained time? Okay, I thought I'd really lose time because I didn't go anywhere near the... 40-40 wing, pretty neutral. Uh, 40, quite high off diff, uh, maximum engine braking. Uh, max camber, which I've seen pretty much everywhere. A mid, 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 middle ground on the toe. Um, very... Very similar suspension style to like the very, 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 very early stages of 23. So max min... Oh. I mean, I'm not, yeah, it's the way it is. I'm not on the... So now that we've watched the lap, hi, it's editing Lucas here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to watch the lap, break it down, and I'm going to point out, I think, the key components to, um, yeah, try to put together a clean lap round here, which is very difficult um, from what I found yesterday, to try and put three sectors that are good together. Um, something I didn't actually manage to do, which I'll explain and show in this video. So without further ado, and without me waffling, let's jump into it. Now, straight off the bat, you might be wondering... Now, this is something that I'm not 100% certain on just yet. Why I'm going to the middle of the track. Now, on this game so far, um, on a lot of the straights, we're finding that, like, for example, at Silverstone as well, is another example, you ground out and hit the ground on bumps um, a lot, and that costs hundreds of a second. That costs time. So I found from the laps that I'd done that going to the middle for me at least, was more consistent than staying to the left, as if I stayed to the left all the way down to the middle, I think I sometimes lost a f like maybe two hundreds down to the end, but again, maybe that's not the case, maybe staying to the left is fine, but you have to avoid some very particular bumps, but at least for me, I just kept going to the middle of the road and then slowly drifting it back, and actually on this lap, we didn't do a good job of it, we actually still got the bump, so yeah, the point is, there's a lot of bumps in this game, quite hard to get round them um, and after this the delta um, we yeah just continue to improve which I'll show after with another set to one into turn one you want to break just before the 100 meter board sorry I just missed that so we are breaking g nearly full pressure just around now so you want to be on the brakes not at 100 meters because I think breaking too late isn't actually helpful like sometimes breaking really late and hard is the way to go but I feel like so far in this game you know Braking just never, like, never being the last on the brakes is actually not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, going into someone, braking just before 100 metres. And this kerb now on the left is actually fully usable. Um, it's also quite inconsistent because the car dips down on the left-hand side, so it's very easy to unsettle the car and pinch the brakes. Um, but generally speaking, the brakes are very easy to pinch anyway. Um, but I, I know I'm waffling, I'll get to it now, but... Yeah, you, we are using a little bit of kerb. You can go fully all the way over it, just for reference, and gain time. And then, yeah, we're going to use third gear into into turn one. And you're going to see we wind in a lot of steering lock. Um, because at the moment on this game, the front the front end, you the slip angle is quite extreme. So you can just fold the front in, and it still grips when it shouldn't be gripping. So that's why you're going to see a lot of aggressive sort of Alonzo steer moments where you just chuck the front end in and the slip allows it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at uh, with turn one. So I'll just play it again once slowly. Or not slowly, just play it through. And yeah, you can see the car just picks up full throttle already at this point. I were probably even before I paused it. You're very quickly on the power third gear. There's a lot of traction in this game. Turn two is just very simple, completely flat, and you want to literally 
try and make this as straight as possible. It does gain you a good bit of time. If you are, you know, even half a car more to the right, you're just making this a tighter corner and, you know, scrubbing a few K kph of speed so you want to try and straight line this as much as possible just nice and smooth on the steering drs open as early as you can and then we bring it over to the left hand side again as is the case with the last few years on this game or just for years on their phone game you want to use all this road on the inside coming up to yeah braking basically just bang on 100 meters give or take maybe a fraction later but 100 meters is you know fine enough we are holding 7th gear, revving it out into here, down to 4th gear. And then, yeah, as you're sort of going sort of entry to mid, like even the sort of second phase of entry before you get to mid corner, you're folding that steering in, which we'll, I'll show you one more time. I keep pausing without showing sort of the, the corner through fluidly. There you go, just like that final little bit of turning, and that just slips the front as the car through here, as we're using fourth gear, which means that the on this game using the higher gears feels like if you're if you're in a co corner where you can use third or fourth gear, you if you use the higher gear, it feels like the differential is like completely open, like the difference is extreme. So you know third gear, feel, for example, if I use third gear, it feel like the diff is one hundred percent locked. Then if I go fourth gear, it opens up massively, which obviously can be true to certain extents, but it's very very noticeable um, on this game so far. So yeah, fourth gear. You're very, very gentle with the throttle. You can just see... I know this little thing pops up, which makes it quite annoying, so apologies for that. But we'll just play the corner through fluidly. So, 7th gear, revving it out, breaking 100 metres, fold the steering in, and then look how progressive that throttle input was. You've just got to really balance it. We didn't actually get a great exit on this one, but again, using all this kerb on the exit, making sure you're, you know, going all the way up to the white line. Um, and another thing to note is that kerbing on this game... Um, how do I say this? kind of doesn't exist sometimes like the curbs are very very lenient the cars can just fly over them and the best example probably of that is this next corner non-existent you just completely cut over the left hand side of that um and yeah that is us through set to one but before we go any further i want to show you the best set to one i've done and uh, yeah just how peaky it can be so let's cut to that so here is our better set to one um on our delta lap that we're showing before it is a four seven set to one this is a three nine so yeah quite a considerable difference um and yeah we'll just play it through and you can already see going down to turn one the difference in the uh the delta were actually uh nearly well, sort of sixteen thousands up so yeah it's uh quite a difference and you can see into turn one this time so maybe opening move drifting over to the left opening up this entry a little bit more but the key is sort of like how i fold the steering and carry the speed into one so i'll just play it through normally first uh, you know what? no i'll just play it through i'm waffling too much so into turn one and yeah we just fling in the steering the rear settles in and we just yeah that's 600 quicker than the one i just showed it's inc it's insane the difference you can get sometimes and then into turn four exact same thing again carrying the speed and then yeah that was the best set to one i managed that was a 393 set to one um and yeah that just shows you even on like you know the difference between getting good sectors and great sectors and how hard it is to actually put together so yeah plenty of time available um but without further ado we're going to cut back to sector two Alright, so here we are again for sector 2, and uh, yeah, as we sort of touched on before, you want to be using every last bit of entry here, the car will go over absolutely no problem, um, and yeah, coming into, I believe is uh, turn 6, technically speaking, into this right-hander, this complex, uh, and we're using temporal setup of course, this is completely flat, you just hold 6th gear and you take it completely flat, it's basically trying to get through without hitting bumps, now unfortunately on this game, through here, there's a lot of random bumps and sometimes it'll bounce you completely half a car too wide and then your whole sector's done, so it's very random to get right sometimes like the you're threading a needle through bumps that you physically can't see because they shouldn't be there in the first place um i think i saw barry's hot lap and he was actually using uh, a lot of this inside curb so that's probably a better way to avoid it something i didn't do um because naturally the section's flat so i wasn't really considering about opening up that sort of inside as much but as we can see in this section we managed to get through i believe flat out without any bumps and just minimizing the scrub a little bit and you can see on this lap we were 200s down on the delta going in and we exit 
yeah, we can see before we just as we're hitting the brakes, we're sort of we gained a net four hundred give or take. Let's just be around that area. So yeah, through there you're completely flat. Trying to just use don't go way too wide on this curb, but sometimes it will still catch you and you know scrub a few hundreds out. Coming into turn eight, I believe. And yeah, you want to make sure you're bringing it over to the left. You can use as much of this entry as you like. Heavy onto the brakes, but then once we reach peak pressure, we're immediately coming off the brakes um, again. I'll play it through once for you. Down to third, and then, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest examples in the whole lap of just the insane steering lock that we're using. Something that I do not foresee being the case for the whole game, um, as I would be amazed if they didn't... Um, yeah, correct it, because it's obviously very extreme on the front slip angle. But for demonstration purposes, here we are into uh, into turn 8. And we're already peeling off the brake. And then you can, yeah, you can just see in that you know split second, once we are peeling off the brake and when you want to carry all the speed in, you just fold the steering. And then we get to the apex a little bit too early because we do hit this inside curb. It does bounce the car a little bit. And... Then on this exit, you can use a lot of this curb because again, the curb tolerance is so high, you can use these curbs like crazy. So you can use actually more than I did here. Um, I think it probably helps if you don't get as tight as I did to the apex. But yeah, third gear through there. You can hear me complaining about the exit, me being me. Into here, we do our... some. We've been taking like this wide sweeping line for, you know, since like F121 basically or 2021, we take a really wide sweeping line into here. Now, this corner here, there is actually multiple ways you can do it. And at the end of the day, if it's fast, it's not wrong. There is no correct answer, technically speaking. There's things you can do right and wrong, but if the lap time's good, then obviously, you know, whatever way you do it and it's quick, that's, you know, not a bad thing. So into here, we take our wide sweeping line, holding sixth gear onto the brakes, not hitting 100%. We're sort of, I think... Again, sorry for not being able to see the brake trace clearly. That's where we get peak pressure. So we're probably about um, 80%. Hard to tell because the throttle and brake trace are like diagonal now, which um, isn't great for reading it. Um, but yeah, down to third. And again, look how much steering lock we wind in. Just sort of, a, it's like a literally like 2005, 2006, 2006 Alonso, where you just chuck the front end in. Um, and yeah, getting on the power. Use it, this curb is your friend, use it to open up the corner. We do gain quite a lot on our delta. We'll play that corner through one more time though smoothly so you can sort of see it in fluid motion. Sixth gear, wide entry, folding in the steering, and then getting on the power as early as you can. Um, through there, you can also cut the inside, and you can also rotate it a bit more on the braking, which I did a few times, and you can actually get a really good exit by it. There's like th probably three different ways you can do that corner. Um, whatever way you find to do it quickest, um, do it. I did it maybe two or three different ways during this um, time trial session that I did, and all of them were quick. Um, this just happened to be the one that I did on that lap, and that was with folding and the steering. Sort of once I'd got that, once I'd sort of trail breaking out, that's when I started, you know, yanking the steering, use that excessive front grip from the slip angle, and yeah, that's us through that part of the lap. Into this corner, I was honestly struggling to get it consistent. I pro I wasn't as that good in this corner. You can take fourth or fifth gear. Fifth is a bit better for the rotation. I took fourth just to maybe try and get a little bit more of a peak, um, maybe a bit more of peak power. But fifth is probably just as good. Maybe it's better. I didn't actually really try it. Um, again, using all this entry, braking just before this 50 meter board. Around sort of seventy percent break, I'd say. I don't know. It's hard to tell. And you can see, I need to play the corners through first before describing it. But yeah, onto the brakes just before the fifty, and we threw the car in so hard using all the road and the exit. This curb's quite generous, so you can use fourth and rev it out really high, and then you're bringing it over here to save the distance. We'll break it down quickly for you. And to here, and yeah, we just we're literally throwing the car in really aggressively. I think that's probably a consequence of me using fourth gear, as with fifth gear, you'd get more rotation on the on the throttle, because the car's a bit more open. Um, so on the power, and yeah, you're, the, the goal through there is to try and make it, you know, carry as much speed as you can by throwing it in, but making it as straight as possible in the process. It's, it's harder than it looks, that corner, on this game, in my opinion. But yeah, through here, minimising the steering lock, just making sure that you don't go too far over onto this right-hand side curb, as you will bottom out. And that's obviously not ideal. But then coming to the end of sector two, again, using all of this entry, we're holding out in sixth gear, and we throw it in, 
and this was actually really smooth through here. That was pretty textbook as far as um, um, an example can get. So I'll just play it through one more time. There's not any meter board reference, so you've just got to sort of judge it with your eye for the distance. But you can see there, down, you know, couple down two gears, getting on the power to get the rotation. Um, yeah, not really much else to add for that one. Definitely, you know, using the front end to manipulate the grip on the entry in the mid corner, um, and then the exit you're just trying to, you know, power through. So yeah, a lot of it's on the front end through there. Um, throwing it in. Then through here, I quite like, I think, I hope my delta shows it as well, but going to the left hand side here, look at the delta, we gained time. So by going to the left here, instead of staying on the track or over to the right a little bit, we gained time. So I think it was a little bit, it's like maybe a hundredth or two extra on this left side, sort of going down the straight from what I found. Into the last corner now, we'll just play it through first. We break really late, sort of 75 meters, chuck in the steering, get on the power, using all that road in the exit. And we'll play it through one more time. Uh, revving out. Oh, I keep skipping too little, sorry. Um, yeah, revving it out in seventh gear. Braking, mm, maybe it's 80 meters, sorry, maybe 75. I mean, yeah, reaching 100% brake pressure. Down to fourth gear, just as we're sort of coming off the curb, trailing off the brake. And you can see that's when we get this sort of an aggressive input on the steering as we're sort of peeling out of that final phase of the braking. And this inside curb, if you hit it, it's, on this game, if you hit this curb, oh, I just hit my monitor, it's not the end of the world. You can literally f fly over this curb, and if you, it's all about the exit. So, yeah, on this, you know, on this, we're very progressive, get on the full power before we sort of reach for, you know, getting the car completely over the curb. Little wiggle, but that's fine, because we've got really good momentum. And, yeah, our delta's going up to the line. DRS open, and that is a lap of Bahrain. Um, and yeah, I hope that was a, a relatively useful track guide. Um, yeah, please give me some feedback down below on what you would like to hear in a track guide, as naturally I'm always looking at like sort of perfection details and stuff like that, but if there's certain things that I should be explaining a bit more simple or things that I've not mentioned, please give me feedback in the comments, it would mean a lot and help me make the track guides um, even better for you. Um, but yeah. Much love. Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the, the hot lap and the, the track guide. Like and subscribe, comment, all that good YouTube stuff for um, more F124 content. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.